Welcome to the NBA.com. This is John. This reports for the 23rd. Well, we did see the dip all the way to the 50%. And then the buyback coming through. We've got a little bit of a turnaround here, beginning with um, the green DOC, the term buyers. Uh, we're still declining straight with the DOC red. We're still in lower shakeouts. So again, it's one of those where you're going to get softness bouts mixed in with the buys. We still have not dip below the red line, so that tends to be more bullish on a retest of the 50%. Um, direction on the power low has been to the downside here, but we haven't seen any large spike spread uh, like I was talking about. You look for at least uh, 10 point spread uh, in the direction of uh, where it's going. And the weakness that's manifested in this is just uh, so far been temporary and in fact you had rising gold above the 50% won't take much to uh, push this right back to the highs of course as we get closer to uh, the election uh, all eyes are going to be on that now interestingly enough we've got a very different uh, configuration developed on the uh, power mode 2 with the NASDAQ so we've been in the straight decline here with the shakeout as well for the NASDAQ been right at its 50% and its weakness a uh, little bit more uh, significant because we were waiting for this positive extreme to fill and it's taken a little bit longer than it took the S&P uh, to do so, but uh, literally hanging uh, right at that 50% and a break of that, I think, uh, certainly will lead to at least a dip to the 38, uh, if not uh, even further uh, hitting down lower towards this 10.8, so that would be a significant one. But you'd have to have some kind of um, shock, um, i.e. something with the election could certainly trigger uh, that kind of move, but for now, um, seems to be enough uh, short-term support uh, to keep things from uh, breaking down, except for you do have uh, shorts rising here, but now they're getting to this uh, elevated level where you would expect to see some kind of uh, break to uh, the downside. And if they're unable to do that, that actually creates a significant buy pressure. And so I would expect if we're not able to break down below that 50, then we're gonna have to shoot uh, straight up. So we'll see if we get an immediate return from this power mode to uh, whenever you see uh, green above the zero line in that, uh, it tends to be more negative uh, from a daily standpoint, so it's just something worth paying attention to. So, the, and the interesting thing about it is when you do get this kind of positive from the green on the um, power mode 2, it's a negative number in order to get there. You have to have a complete inversion of where the setup is. Now, oftentimes it takes a couple of days uh, for it to react when you're looking at a daily chart, uh, but it certainly uh, points to an anomaly, and it doesn't happen very often. So it's definitely worth noting. Um, maybe we should look at the euro first. Still maintaining right about that 50% level right there. And uh, this again is that uh, constant battle between um, the EU and the Fed. The Fed wanting to keep things well, relatively where they are, a little bit higher. The EU would certainly prefer a much more reduced uh, euro valuation. Um, that's going to be ongoing. I, I think that the likelihood is the Fed <laughs> wins that battle in the short term, uh, unless there's a major disrupt with uh, red exit, in which case then you could see uh, a significant enough flight out of euro uh, into dollars. Turning to gold again, it's waiting for any disrupt. Um, doesn't appear to be anything on the geopolitical front at this particular point. Um, so far, uh, Turkey and them have been maintaining a calm stance with the Azerbaijan situation. So if that escalates, then I certainly think you would see a spike in gold. But again, um, that's going to be relative to a new stimulus. would be more of a significant shock for it. Uh, that would certainly drive the price up. And it doesn't look like there's going to be a stimulus prior to uh, the election. There we go. Intraday. Oh, yes, it was a very, another really nice intraday run. I mean, we had some beautiful setups. Uh, we had come in and seen the uh, buy configurations with the uh, rising power mo, um, dotted green line from the uh, long short algo. And then, sure enough, it turned up green in that. And then we were talking about um, 
these situations where we look for DLC spread, um, but you can begin to see the precursors of them. When you get the steel rising above cyan within a broader upturn, uh, everything's looking good, but what I start to look for is the magenta uh, on the shakeout flat now, or even be in a decrease, and then you look for the transitional moves of where um, Orange pops above steel and steel comes below um, cyan. It's usually the beginning of it. And that took place right about here, just before we made the new highs. And then you had the full DOC spread. Um, and then it's at that point, that's where you look for, uh, like potential moves right here, where you get a transitional spot of the steel moving above. So that becomes more of a bullish uh, configuration right at that spot. But when I'm in a still downturn negative shakeout as well as falling magenta not quite yet uh, so you wait for the dip of the um, orange below red uh, but it's got to take place at a situation where you have um... so as we came across from the actual magenta signal and like I was talking about here where we get that positive improvement then I look for green uh, to pop above particularly if I don't have a steel reset uh, and after, you know, 10, 15 bars, I'm um, looking to see P2 pivots, like this one that took place right here. And then that significant dip of uh, this orange coming back below. And in this case, the confirmation came with the uh, green over cyan. And that, of course, you had the dotted line there to take place. Um, and that took off. And it was a beautiful run coming back up to the top. And then the exact same configuration DOC spread. In this particular case, you had the uh, precursor of it here where the orange shoots above and uh, steel, and then steel dips below cyan, which creates that uh, inverse play of weakness. And sure enough, it happens right up at the top. Uh, in this case, we're at the 76% uh, Morganacci lines. And that created the short signal, but as I was pointing out, when you start to get these depths and you get the reverse of it, um, what I'm looking for is that baseline of the magenta or slight uptick in it, particularly if you move to a positive shakeout. Uh, and that's exactly what happened here towards the later part of the day. And that went across uh, nicely until we ended up with similar short configurations, but again, uh, you've got to have a more significant breakdown before the turnaround, and it doesn't take much to see that uh, steel rise above uh, the cyan on the DOC, and orange drops below green, and that gives you that little burst, which is what took us back to the 100% range. We had developed some positive extremes that took us, um, well, all the way to the lows, right back down about uh, 34, 37 range. And we hadn't uh, achieved a dip down on that until, uh, well, just the post market here that's taking place uh, just a little bit ago. Um, but as soon as we hit it, jump right back up. And we're still at the 34.58 range. So um, all in all, beautiful performance. Excellent to see it uh, work out that way. But I definitely want you to pay more attention to that uh, relationship between the cyan, steel, and orange lines, particularly as it relates to um, no steel resets or even like this where you're in a long run and you have nothing but steel below cyan uh, the whole range. And that'll just give you a much easier way to uh, see changes in the uh, algorithmic direction and you'll be able to be ahead of the curve and uh, pre-prepare for it. As always, though, I will update any uh, new and interesting items like I did with this on the Skype chat. And if you want to, you can always check back on the Skype chat uh, to see the references on these. Trade well. We'll talk to you later.